Hello there, my friends. It's time to get out into the real world with Lee Anderson. Yes, there is no other place to be of a Friday evening than sat on your couch watching Lee Anderson chat a load of rubbish. We're going to go through the best of his second show. His first was an absolute blinder, if you remember. He was feeding beans to Brendan Clark Smith. He decided James O'Brien was the Wokey of the Week, despite James O'Brien not doing or saying anything particularly woke that week. And that woman from Allo Allo, I forget her name, got 9 out of 10 for her ability to pull a pint. Riveting stuff. So, without further ado, let's get into the best of the second episode of Lee Anderson's Real World. And we're going to start with the intro, because this this is quite the introduction, I have to say. Let's have a look. In 1941, the German army, the Nazis, invaded Latvia, and they knocked on the door of a 15-year-old young man called Janis, Janis Peter. And the, the request was simple. We take one male man, member from each family to the Russian front to fight the Russians. Janis had to go. He left his dad and his 12-year-old brother. Yonis survived the war, but imagine a 15-year-old boy having to do such horrible things. At 17 years old, after the war, he was a displaced citizen. He was a refugee. He was an asylum seeker. He had nowhere to go. He couldn't go back to Latvia. He was given two choices, either the US or the United Kingdom. So he came to the United Kingdom in the hope that at some stage he could go back to Latvia and trace his family and start again. But that didn't happen. Yonis came to a village in Derbyshire, near me, and they stayed in army barracks. And they were so grateful were the Eastern Europeans to be rescued and given a fresh start in life that they volunteered on the farms in Derbyshire to pick the vegetables, the potatoes, the carrots, the onions, whatever. And they did this for no pay. I was wondering where he was going with this. <laughs> God, he, he is so shallow. There are no depths he will not sink to. No pay at all. They were just delighted to be safe and to be given a fresh start. Some years later, he married a girl from the village. He had children. He became a British citizen. He's no longer with us, as you're honest, but he always said this, that Britain is a wonderful tolerant and kind nation. His family came to see me last year and they said, Lee, everything you say about the asylum seekers, alleged asylum seekers coming out of the channel is absolutely correct. They are economic migrants and my dad would turn in his grave. <laughs> well, that was a heartwarming story, wasn't it? Oh my God. Oh, Lee, you're excelling yourself. Wow. <laughs> Feel free to leave your thoughts on that heartwarming tale in the comments. This guy is beyond parody. He really is. Let's see what's next, shall we? Barry Gardner? What the hell are you doing there? I expect better of you, Barry. Now then, it's interview time. My special guest this week is the left in the corner, Barry Gardner. And over here, two really special guests, a good friend of mine, Marco Longhi, MP for... Dur that was a bit aggressive. Let's have another look at that. And over here, two really special guests, a good friend of mine, Marco Longhi, MP for Dudley North. And I don't think he uh, expected quite the thump there. Is that how you greet your friends? I'm not familiar with what it's like to be a thug or a hooligan. Is that how you... Maybe it is. I'll give that a try next time I meet up with my friends. I'll just walk up behind one of them and just thump them on the shoulder. As an introduction. So this is Marco Longhi, who is the MP for Dudley North. Another 2019 intake. Not a particularly nice individual. And his wife. And the discussion is going to turn to poverty now. And just listen to Lee Anderson disrespecting the people of the United Kingdom who are living in poverty. This is so very Tory of him. Have a listen to this. I'm going to talk about poverty in the UK at the moment because we see a lot of things in the press, in the media, and we speak about it on a regular basis in Parliament about poverty. And I always try and arc back to my childhood when we were probably in poverty, impoverished. But, you know, looking at Brazil, the, the way people live in Brazil, you've seen real poverty. <sighs> real poverty. 
I mean, like it's some sort of competition. The race to the bottom, folks. It's truly on. Lee, one of the first things I said when Marco brought me to England for the first time, we were driving from the airport to Marco's parents, and I said to Marco, do you not have poor houses here? And he said, no. So there is a huge difference. Um, you don't have poverty. We don't have poverty. The no, reason why I to ask that question is if you go down a road in Brazil, particularly in the north of Brazil, yeah. you literally have mud shacks yeah. on the road where people are trying to, f to sell you if you stop on a long journey. So, a so tell me this, uh, Andre, if you're in Brazil and you've got a job, say, in a factory and you become ill and you've got no money, what happens? Does the state pick the tab up? Do you, do you get housing paid for? Who, who no. feeds you? No. So how do you survive? Um... With great difficulty. <laughs> wow. Save me. What is the point of comparing the United Kingdom to Brazil? I, I don't understand. It's all relative. <laughs> it's hard not to laugh because it's so openly without shame. Marco Longhi has brought along his wife to participate in this pantomime. Oh. Um, I don't come from a very well-loved family. Um, I'm not embarrassed to say that, but we didn't have a lot to eat. My mum had quite a few children. Um, How many? Um, I am the last of 11. 11? Yeah, but two died, so I'm... I'm, I'm the ninth one at the moment. Um, we basically had, this is something that happens to quite a few, to poor families. We eat coffee and bread very often. Yeah. I used to have coffee and bread for breakfast, mid-morning snack. We did have one lunch. Um, there wasn't, it, it didn't include a lot of meat. Um, afternoon snack was coffee and bread. Dinner was coffee and bread. If you were lucky, you had some soup made with yeah. Not meat. Yeah. Um, and then if I was hungry at night, at 10 o'clock at night, I used to have coffee and bread as well. So, so that on its own, as a standalone story, if someone was telling me that, I would be upset by that. It's not a nice way to grow up. But in the context of what they're doing here, I hope she realises she's being used here. Although she's probably quite a willing participant. If you're married to a Tory like Marco Longhi for that long and his lifestyle has hauled you out of poverty, I guess it's pretty easy to sell your soul like this. I guess you can see um, things through different eyes. When you come to the UK, um, it's, it's more difficult for, for me and Marco and Barry when we talk about poverty. Yes, we might have experienced a little bit of poverty growing up. I certainly, I never thought we were impoverished in, in my village growing up, but looking back now, we probably were classed as being in poverty because we didn't have any money. Uh, my parents lived week to week, they never had any savings. You know, they, we had, like I said before, we, we grew our own vegetables and had chickens at the bottom of the garden. I guess you though, you're... That's an egg, by the way, yeah. And I've got two eggs, so That's that would probably, probably feed this is it. This is luxury for Well, it looks, is, it, is it actually boiled? I thought, I thought you should share in what Andrea would have considered luxury for breakfast. Did you, have, did you have a... Where did he pull that egg from? What the hell is going on? Let's rerun that back here. At the bottom of the garden. I guess you, though, you're... He was just holding an egg the whole time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. That's an egg, by the way. Yeah, and I've got two eggs, so That's that would probably probably feed. This is it. this is luxury. For well, Andrea. it looks. Is, and, it, is it actually boiled? I thought, I thought you should share in what Andrea would have considered luxury for breakfast. Did you have, did you have eggs for breakfast? Um. No, no. We've established already. She had coffee and bread. What are you talking about? She's already said. Coffee and bread. Eggs used to be for lunch to replace meat. Um, okay. if, you, if you were lucky, you could have a slice of cheese. Yeah. Um, yeah, 
it, it was hard. So I guess looking at it uh, yeah. in Brazil, then in the UK, you've compared different levels of poverty. I still do. And you still do? Yeah. OK, and do you think we're lucky in this country? Because I certainly do. You are very lucky. So I want to bring our token left here in the corner, Barry. He's sat there smiling with his, uh, with his pint. Barry, what do you think to what Marco and, and, and Andrea said about poverty? They see real poverty in a place like Brazil, which is, I suppose, a developing country. Uh, and we hear people on... on... Uh, you've just answered the question yourself. It's a developing country. We are a developed country, allegedly, anyway. I think we're going down the toilet pretty rapidly. So there should be nobody living in any kind of poverty here. None whatsoever. But Lee doesn't think there are, so whatever. On your side of the house, bang on about poverty all the time. Yes, there are people struggling in this country, but I don't, I don't think, personally, that the poverty levels are as, as you lot say. What would you say to that? Look, we're the sixth largest economy in the world. Yeah. Uh, and you're right, there is poverty in other parts of the world which is extreme, where you're talking about, as Andrea says, people living in, in literally mud shacks. Um, I've, I've been to those countries, I've seen that, and it's desperate. Uh, and that's why I think, you know, we should be doing all we can as one of the wealthiest countries in the world to alleviate that poverty. And that's why I disagreed with, with your party, as, as you know, Lee, uh, on the reduction of the 0.7% of GDP going to international aid. But there are people who are suffering in this country, and you and I have seen them. You, you used to work in Citizens Advice. Yeah. You saw yeah. sometimes there'd be, I'm sure, queues outside the door when you were volunteering there and working there. And, and people came to you with stories of real family pain. And this week, we've just heard that 11 million people in this country have had to use food banks and have been missing at least one meal a day. Now, does it compare with people who are in abject poverty, who, as Andrea says, are, are literally living off bread and coffee? No, it, it's totally different. But that shouldn't be the standard by which we in the sixth largest economy in the world are judging what's right for our people. Yeah, I agree. Couldn't have said it better myself. Although I would have sworn a lot more at Lee Anderson's stupidity. Yeah, I agree with that. Andrea, what would you say to that? Are so, judging what's right. So clearly Lee Anderson said something sh really stupid here, so they've had to edit it out. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and then it cuts to her. So it's a shame that this isn't live because we'd get to hear the full gambit of lunacy. Moving on. Um... <laughs> this is going to get really quite odd now. Um, there are no words for what you're about to witness. So let's just play it and you can react accordingly in the comments. Something about me just it embarrasses me a little bit. What are you doing with a fork? So we know what happened last week. He fed baked beans to Brendan Clark Smith. And for the love of God, he's got a fork again. What the hell is going on this time? We've got a fork. Right. Now, just a few weeks back, Michelle, you appeared on TV as a cat. Had uh, some feline feelings. Yeah. And, and now we want to dismiss this as just if, a... If this is going blip. where I think it's going, and so, you're about to bring out a plate of whiskers, you can bugger off. We've got a, a, a tin of cat food here. It's, I don't know what brand it is, but it's... I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you delicious. Mental? Well, we're going to get it out. We're going to see if you're really a cat. Well, no, I'm not. I am not. I'm telling you now I'm not. You go first and I'll follow I'm gonna shake on that. Uh, I'm gonna shake on that. What the hell is going on? He said that with such glee. Look at the glee on his face. Like he was re he's really up for eating this cat food. I'm gonna shake on that. A sinister little smile on his face there, look. Look. Uh, look at that smirk. God almighty. I'm gonna shake on that. Uh, oh God, I don't know if you're a man of your word. Would you, are you gonna try that? I don't shake. want to. No, I don't want you to. You don't want to do it. I don't want to eat. Here's the challenge. Ocean, Here's the challenge. I don't want to eat ocean fish pate. I don't want to. Well, if I have a fork for, or you have one as well. Uh... This is really weird. Trying to goad a woman 
into eating cat food on television. This might be stranger than the baked bean fiasco. Look at his face. Oh my God. It's a challenge. I don't, I don't want to. It's a challenge. Say, no, can I, I say to? no? You can say no. I feel. I do know a man who will eat it actually. And can I just make it. something absolutely clear? I'm not a cat, right? And um, <laughs> what I was trying to do on that episode, I just think the world has gone mad. You failed the and cat challenge, by the way. I did fail, but I am happy to take that on the chin because in life there are certain things that you should fail at. It's, you know, failing sometimes is not losing, it's yeah. just being sensible. But when I dressed up as a cat, um, <laughs> I, I think to myself that the so adult... Nice. I have no sense of smell, so I'll take your word for it, but adults are indulging children in their nonsense, and I think it's really dangerous on a, a yeah, on a serious note. And I know that I did dress up and I was being a bit flippant with it, yeah. but I've got a little boy and I worry about what he's going to grow into when it comes to schooling because my little boy can't suddenly become a girl if he feels like that. He yeah. can't suddenly become a cow or a fox or a you know chicken dinner or whatever the obsession will be at that time. He's a little boy and it worries me what these children are get taught and what they're encouraged to think and what adults are indulging. And it's like a fashionable fad, but it worries me. So I will keep speaking out about that. Just eat the damn cat food then. And I'll believe, I, <laughs> and I'll believe every word you're saying. Right now, I'm a little bit, you know, apprehensive to believe you. But if you just eat the cat food, I'll know you're genuine. I don't even have a cat as well that I can put that to good use, yeah, so I feel real wasteful. Yeah. It's just, it's Why don't you take one for the team anyway, though? Go on, Lee. I'm not doing it. Why? Listen, if we shake hands and we both do I'm it... I'm not eating cat food. It's teamwork, Michelle. No, I'm not it's on your team. team. I'm on a team of one. A team of one. Well, yeah. that's been a great interview, by the way. All right. Onwards. So, if I know my audience, which I like to think I do, I know the one thing you'll have had on your minds since the Court of Appeals overturned Suella Braverman's Rwanda plan is um, what Gary the cabbie thinks about it. And I've got good news for you because Gary the cabbie is going to tell us exactly what he thinks about it. So let's have a watch. Now then, Gary, um, yesterday we had the judgment on the Rwanda flights which uh, somebody in their wisdom has decided that the Rwanda flights are unlawful. What do you think of that? It's absolutely ridiculous. They decided to come across our channel illegally. They've entered our country illegally. We cannot afford at the moment to feed our elderly, our war veterans. So in my opinion, we should remove them to Rwanda and get our government to keep an eye on it, to make sure the Rwandans are doing what they said they're going to do with the asylum seakers. Well, there you go, Gary the Cabby speaking common sense, as he did last Friday, and I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, the next week we'll have more from Gary the Cabby. What a stereotype Gary the Cabby is. But I guess that's the point, really, isn't it? Wouldn't really have the same impact if when Lee Anderson asked him the question about Rwanda there, he went, uh, Actually there, Lee, I think it's, uh, I think it's really good that uh, they've overturned it because I don't think it's humane. I don't think we should be sending them to Rwanda. I think it's our problem. We should be dealing with it. He certainly wouldn't be back on next week. And I think Lee Anderson would find a new cab driver. Anyway, onwards. All right, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's Wokey of the Week. Um, he's doing it with this Adam Brooks fella this week. I believe this pub belongs to Adam Brooks. So he's very kindly letting Lee Anderson film in here every week. Well, let's crack on with Wokey of the Week. The excitement is palpable. You know, let's right. start right. Now, let's talk about Wokey of the Week because no expense spared. We've got a new trophy there. Right. Do you want to just show the viewers yeah, that... Adam? It's a lovely trophy. So we've got, I think we've got three categories, or well, three entrants this week. We've got Gary Neville. Yeah. Um, he's been, uh, I think he's joining the Dragon's Den. 
Yeah. Here is a man who was complaining on, on his Twitter feed to anybody that listened to him a few months back about public sector pay uh, and the pay increases. He was saying it should be like 15, 20% of whatever it was at the time. I can't remember, especially for nurses. This is the same man who then pays his own staff in a hotel. Uh, minimum wage. Right. Why are you drawing to that nonsense? I think he's a proper hypocrite. I've, yeah. had, I've had a few words with Gary Neville uh, yeah. on Twitter before over his Qatari hypocrisy. Yes, good one. You know, so um, he is he is a proper woke. You think know? he's a hypocrite? A, a massive hypocrite. Yeah. And I can't see how he can be a dragon when you know most of his life he's been paid a huge salary by. Man United. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's not exactly an entrepreneur in my, in my no, eyes. No, he's not an entrepreneur. He, I think you're quite right. He's a hypocrite. So he's a contender this week. Right. So the Trick Awards. Yeah. Uh, lots of GB News uh, presenters were at the awards on, I think it was yesterday. Yeah. The, the day before. And I think Nigel got an award and the Breakfast Show got an award as well. Fantastic. A little bit of booing, a little bit of jealousy. Yeah. Why is that? Well, GB News have upset the apple cart. You know, the fear. Uh, these mainstream media sort of bigwigs, they yeah. fear GB News and the popularity. You know, it is the people's channel and it's growing every week. Uh, one thing that annoyed me is that the Trick Awards deleted their tweet congratulating oh, okay. Nigel Farage. Yeah. Um, they reissued it, yeah. but, you know, they cut the sponsor out. OK, so the last one, Adam, I've got to wrap it up quickly, is the Eco Loons again. Right. They invaded the cricket pitch during the Ashes yeah. test match. Uh, one lunatic was on there. We was carted off by Bairstow. I'd love to see that. Him, yeah, him dragging I, I, him I off. would have given him a couple of rib shots on the way so out So what do you think well? the solution is to that? Uh, I'm sorry? We're just going to gloss over that, are we? You'd have given him a couple of rib shots. God, GB News really has this thing about assaulting protesters. They promote it all the time. Anyone would think they're fascist, but... Uh, hmm, hmm. Anyway... Because uh, I was toying with the idea of maybe getting these eco loons in the in the old nets, yeah. and uh, let Stuart Broad have a couple of overs at them. Fire some balls at them. Yeah. So see what they want want to do then. No, you know? See what they do then. Yeah. No pads, no bat. Just yeah, just on. They soon so, stop. <laughs> so Gary Neville. Yeah. Trick awards or the eco loons. Gary Neville. There you go. Another there trophy in your cabinet, Gary. Probably uh, probably the best one you'll ever get. So that's James O'Brien and Gary Neville. So Gary Neville has dethroned James O'Brien as Wokey of the Week. James, you can bounce back from this, man. You can bounce back next week to be even wokier. And finally, last but not least, we have this. Yes, that's right. The most important part of the show, we are going to see whether Marco Longhi... Conservative MP for Dudley North can dethrone Vicky Michelle, the hello, hello lady. She scored 9 out of 10 for her pint-pulling abilities. It's a real tall order, um, but let's just see how he gets on. Crucial, but riveting stuff. Come on down, Marco. You know the challenge. Pint pot. Pint One pint. pint. Oh, we go. You've got 30 seconds to do it. Oh, it's happening. Mate, tip your glass a bit. It's getting a bit frothy. Oh, look at me, look profit. At oh, okay, yeah. Let me profit. Towel, mate. please. Towel, please. <laughs> he had one job again. I'll just mop this up. Look at that. Oh, dear. God, oh, this is not going oh, well, Lee. That, that's it. That's it. On that's the it? bar, Marco. On the bar. Oh, my goodness. On the, oh, on the front here, mate. Oh, on the front. On the front. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a shocker. What the hell is that? I didn't think it was possible to produce a pint that frothy. God, crap politician, crap member of parliament, crap puller of a pint. It's uh, oh, two weeks into the show, Adam. That's uh, one of the worst pints I've ever seen. I've got to say, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's Don't give up the day job. No, I wouldn't. Right. I wouldn't. No. So how much would you charge for that? Would you charge for the price, Adam? I, I, I couldn't serve that. Well, what, what about? about hang on, hang on. What about all of those Twitter people saying, "Oh, that's on expenses." Listen, Marco. Don't make excuses. This is. Oh, uh, I'll take that anyway. I, <laughs> I mean, you too. will. You no. will laugh, Marco, but um, that is quite shocking. Um, what do you think, Adam? Scores? I've got to give him out of ten. Three. I've got as much as that. Three? That's a three. What the hell would a one be or a zero? How can that be a three? It can't get any worse, surely. The only thing that could be worse than that is an empty glass. 
if he missed the glass entirely. Just a puddle around his feet. Jesus. It's, it's bad, yeah. OK, let's get the board out. <laughs> We've got some chalk here. It's a shocker. It'll probably take 20 minutes to settle down that well, so three. There we go. Hey, I'm Marco. Three. Well, that was going to conclude things, actually, but I noticed something. I noticed something whilst watching this and during the edit. And I'm just going to show it to you now because you'll be interested. So this next up advert popped up during Lee Anderson's interview with Michelle Jubry here. And it says, next up, Agony Anderson. But this segment never aired. Which is, oh, I tell you, it would have been classic to see Lee Anderson trying to be some sort of agony ant. So I hope at some point that segment makes it to the final edit. Because, oh, can you imagine people writing in with their genuine problems to Lee Anderson? And I'm sure they filmed the segment, but it never made it. So can you imagine the shitty advice he gave? Oh, it would have been wonderful. Anyway, what have we learned from Lee Anderson's fantasy world this week? Well, that UK poverty is not poverty worth worrying about. That he tried to goad Michelle Jubry into eating cat food. Gary the cabbie is still bigoted. Gary Neville is Wokey of the Week. And Marco Longhi is crap at everything. Another hour well spent, eh? Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon.